Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm a little late, but I wanted to give you kind of a roundup of what I really loved in 2023. I'm not gonna do a lot of talking from my intro. I just wanna get going because it's a pretty long list. This video is gonna be focused on higher end products and I'll have another video that will be focused on drugstore products. I don't know how I'm gonna do this because I like so many and I'm not sure if these products were released in 2023. I really think that most of these are not new releases for 2023, but I just really started focusing on my channel in 2023, so they're new to me. First, I'm gonna start off with a tinted moisturizer. So my favorite tinted moisturizer is a Smashbox Halo Glow, Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. I'm in the color light medium. I find that it gives a beautiful coverage and it lasts all day for me. It dries down to a nice skin finish. It's not too dewy and it's not too matte, you see? I love it. I've recommended this product to a lot of people and the feedback is wonderful. I wouldn't say that it's sheer and that's probably why I like it is it does give a good amount of coverage but it doesn't feel heavy. And it does have an SPF in it, but in Canada, it's not allowed to list that it has an SPF because of our guidelines. I'm not sure how much it is. I will check though, and I'll see if I can find out. If I can find it, I'm gonna put it on the screen here for you. My favorite stick foundation is the Merit Stick Foundation. This is the, is it the Skin Perfection? Perfection, hold on, let me find out what that is. The Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Foundation and Concealer Stick. I'm in the color Bisque when I'm self-tanned. And if I'm not self-tanned, which is never, I always have a little bit of color. I use linen. Linen goes around the center of my face and in through here, and the bisque is everywhere else. So I can create dimension with those two colors, and it's undetectable on my face. Now, that being said, I look after my skin. It may sit on top of your skin if you have dry skin. I don't have flaky skin, and I don't deal with eczema or anything like that that can cause texture in my skin. So if your skin is like mine, I think you would like it. Really easy to stick in your purse as well for on the go. This one's actually new to me this year. This is the Armani Luminous Silk, and I have it in two shades. This one is too dark for me, and the other one is too light. I mix the two, and it's beautiful, and I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It doesn't give me the full amount of coverage that I love because I do have hyperpigmentation. You can see it right in here. So it really is more for a day where I wanna spend a little bit more time and just detailing these areas with something that has a little bit more coverage or on a day that it doesn't bother me if it's showing through as much. It's undetectable on the skin, really light, gorgeous. I would say that these two foundations are equal, in my opinion. This is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation, and this one is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. Both beautiful. When I'm self-tanned, I'm in the color 330, and then for the Skin Glow, I believe this color is 2N, and they both sit beautifully. They give a nice radiance to the skin, but not overly. The coverage is beautiful on both, and they last all day. Lasting all day is really important to me. I don't see the point. Why would I put something on that's not gonna last all day? The other favorite that I have, and this was last year's favorite, is the House Labs Foundation. I have them in three different colors. I believe I would be a 200, but I have it in 110. 200 and then another color as well. I feel like this one might be 220. I'm not sure, you can see that that's too dark. Just the mix of the two usually works out really well, but finish of it is skin-like. Um, I'm not sure that you would like it if you had oily skin, but if you have normal to dry skin like I do, the House Labs is beautiful and it lasts. And the last one I have is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I wasn't a fan of this at first, I think it was because I had the wrong color. I picked it up in five, and this one is number eight. Now if I'm freshly self-tanned, this works. But now that I have the two colors, I can mix it and it goes really nice. I would say that this foundation has more of a definite skin finish. Like, it says soft glow, but I don't really see a glow. It's definitely a skin finish, in my opinion and I don't find that I really have to powder it that much. Let me put that on and then I'll see. I'm gonna let this sit for a second and see if I can show you, maybe I'm lying. <laughs> like it's not as glow as my Dior Forever Skin Glow. It's definitely not as glowy as my House Labs foundation. I have more, but those are the ones I reach for the most. Let's talk concealers. 
There's some standout concealers here. I would say that my favorite concealer, I don't wanna overwhelm everyone, so I'm gonna stick to three. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to three. House Labs, beautiful. I have the color 13 light medium, and I think that I could go with the lighter of the two. There's two light medium colors. I think it's 11. This one works, but it's a little yellow, and I feel like the other one might be a little bit better for me. It's a beautiful concealer. It seems to move with my skin. Doesn't make my under eye look crepey. It's gorgeous. I have nothing bad to say about that concealer. I honestly think that this would work for everybody. Generally, if you're oily, you're not necessarily oily under here. You know, you don't have the same oil glands that you would in your face. The skin under here is completely different. So I think even if you're an oily skin, you could try this. You may like it. I do powder it, by the way. You really should know what kind of coverage I like. I like coverage. I don't wanna to have to use a lot of product. I don't wanna to have to worry about it lasting all day. If I'm gonna wear concealer, I want it to last. Yes, I really think that you should touch up your concealer throughout the day. It's like touching up your lipstick. Is something gonna look its best after eight hours? No, I don't think so, because this area moves just like our mouth, right? But that is the type of concealer that I like, so this represents that. I recently tried the Hourglass Concealer and I love it. I also think I could use this in a lighter color. I have Apricot and it works really well. I actually think I would like it just a little bit lighter though, but it color corrects so nicely because of the Apricot color. And oh my goodness, it sits so nice. But you don't need a lot. I just put it in here and out here. Well, I have another one that I really like. So I have four. The Shiseido Concealer is stunning. It's very much like the foundation. It gives me a beautiful coverage. It doesn't move. It's so pretty. I'm testing out a concealer right now, so I don't want to put it on. I would say that this color is perfect for me. Yeah, that one's gorgeous. And this one, I can't see the color, so I will put it up here. I'll let you know. I have used all of these products in videos, so I'll try to put the links of the videos below in the description box for you so you can really see the full review or, or at least see a short video of it in action. The other one that I love is my Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Yeah, I love this one. This one is in, it's a much different doe foot applicator. Yeah, there's not much else to say about it, honestly. Again, I feel like it's almost a self-setting concealer. I don't have to powder a lot and it covers. With this type of concealer, I don't have to color correct underneath because it gives me enough coverage. But if I use a concealer, let's say Dior Face and Body, it's thin that I have to double layer, if that makes sense. The other one that's similar to that is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer. Also, it has a lighter coverage and I find that my gray kind of pops through, so I do add a corrector underneath it. So. You know, if I have to put a color corrector and a concealer, why wouldn't I just use one product where I don't have to worry about it and I can use less? That's my thinking. Okay, so that's my four concealers. Good. I kind of feel organized today. Let's get on to contour. I don't contour very often. If I contour, it's really to add dimension, but not to change the shape of my face. I like the shape of my face. It's fine. In fact, I like everybody's shape of their face. Generally, as a professional, if I were doing your makeup, I would not try to change the shape of your face. I like you the way you are. But when you put a foundation on, especially if it's a higher coverage foundation, what happens is you kind of pale, your, you don't pale yourself out, but you, be, you make yourself one color and you need to bring that dimension back in. So that's how I look at bronzing, contouring, highlighting. That's what I'm doing. My favorite contour stick is the Westman Atelier Face Trace, and this is in Biscuit, yeah, I love it. It's a perfect color for me. I especially love this for my nose. I rarely contour my nose, but if I do, this is a perfect shade. Let me see if I can do that now for you actually. So I just put a little bit on my finger, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I put it in between like that, and then I just find my bone of my nose and yeah, just do that. A little bit on the tip of my nose, maybe here. That work, I hope it worked. That's about the most I'll do. And I find if I really try to get tricky with it and technical, I make a mistake and my nose looks more crooked than it is. I don't know, I have to be in the mood. And the other one that I just recently got and I love, 
More so for underpainting is the Makeup Forever Face Palette. I think it's so pretty. When I contour and highlight with this, and again, that's really more so when I'm playing or when I really wanna look fancy, I'll underpaint with this, and then I will use like a Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation or a Dior Face and Body Foundation. Those foundations are lighter, and I'll use it with a sponge, and it allows the contour and highlight to kind of pop through a little bit. So just a light, light sponge application of a light to medium coverage foundation. That's in the video I'm just editing, so that'll be up soon. I wanted to show you a bronzer. The color I have on my skin today is the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, and this is in light medium. You can tell I like this one a lot. I have hit pan. I'm gonna use this until it's all gone. It gives me a nice glow, and yeah, it blends in really nice, so I don't have to ever worry about blending a harsh line. My other favorite bronzer that I love, and I'm having a hard time finding it these days, this is the Bobbi Brown Bronzer in Medium, and the reason I like that is because I tend to be a little bit more red. When I tan, I don't tan yellow, but I'm having a hard time finding that. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they're gonna reformulate or if they're gonna get rid of it. I hope not. I'm gonna hang on to this if they do. Let's go on to blush. My top favorite powder blush is the Dior Backstage. I have it in this color and I have it in Rosewood. It looks so violet there, I don't know why. Why, why does it look like that? The bright lights, like that's more of the real color. How strange. I would say that the Rosewood is what I go for the most. I actually use both of them quite a bit. This color looks more like you've come in from outside, that fresh, fresh, cold bite on your cheek. And this one is just a beautiful everyday, I don't know, it's a very natural blush. It's the Rosewood, beautiful. You might see a theme here because the Tower 28, yeah, very similar. <laughs> Um, the tones are very similar actually in the Tower 28 and the Dior Backstage. This one is called Beach Please. Yeah, this one's called Beach Please. I wear this a lot. Oh, I wanted to show you. So this is Hourglass now that it's dried. The Ambient Soft Glow. I don't see a glow at all. To me, that just looks like a skin finish. So yeah, I'm glad I did that. It's not my imagination. <laughs> All right, so this is Beach Please, really, really, really pretty. Let me put it beside Rosewood. I just want you to see the tone similarities. Yeah, so that is Rosewood and that is Beach Please. Of course, they have different textures. One's cream and one's powder, um, but the tones are almost identical, really. And the other favorite that I have is the Makeup by Mario. This is very similar too. That's perfect pink. Oh no, this one's brighter. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it is it gives you that flushed look like you were just outside skiing. And my last favorite blush is the Rare Beauty. This blush is called Encourage and I use it, let's put it here. I use this one, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> you don't need that much, obviously. I love the tone of this and I use it on my lips. Really good for travel because then you've got both. Favorite setting powders. Probably my all-time favorite this year. I'm gonna keep it really simple. I love the House Labs powder. It doesn't make me look dry at all. It brings down the shine, but I still look fresh. I would say that that's probably one of my favorites. However, I just got this one. This is the Easy Bake and Snatch by Huda Beauty. And this is in Cherry Blossom Cake. Again, I wish I could try it on for you. I'll leave a link to where I tried this out, my first impression. I've seen a few reviews of women my age who didn't like this, and I don't know why. I wonder if it's what they used underneath. Keep that in mind, some products don't mix well with each other. So if you bought a product and it didn't go well, is it because it's a really bad product, or is it because the prep underneath didn't suit the product? Or did you prep your skin well enough that's another question to ask. Or maybe the product just isn't for you, but I wouldn't have guessed that people wouldn't like this one because it is so finely milled, it, like it's silky soft. Anyway, I really like this one. The other one that I don't have in front of me is the Laura Mercier Blur Powder. I really like that one. And Hourglass Veil Setting Powder. Love that one too. All beautiful. My daughter stole that one. I don't play around with a lot of highlighters. All this texture in here does not like a lot of highlight. 
So I'm very careful with my highlight. In fact, a lot of the time is because I wear those dewy blushes or I use a foundation that has a glow to it. I don't need to add more highlight. So I have to be in the mood. I don't have any highlighter on right now and it looks like I do. So to me, it would be weird to add more. I don't need it. If I wanted to though, I've got a few that I really like. The powder highlights that I really love are by Bobbi Brown. This one is Pink Glow. It's so subtle. It just gives a beautiful glow. It doesn't add texture. The other color I love, same formula, is the Quartz Glow. It's more of a champagne. So one has a bit of a pink, one has a champagne. The other one would be the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. This gives a beautiful glow. This one has more glow than this one, I think. And I was sent this product by Laura Mercier. I really like it. This one's called Champagne Pink. I'm not a fan of these applicators, to be honest. Elf Halo Glow has it, Charlotte Tilbury has it, and I'm not a fan. I would never apply this directly to my face anyways. I would always just apply it to my hand. Oh, it's locked. That's why nothing's coming out. Yeah, and a lot comes out. And then I've got all that mess coming out because I squeezed. I'm not a fan, look at, look at all the product. Is it because I squeezed too hard? I just don't like it. I don't like the applicator and it's really too bad. This applicator is perfect because I have control over it. I don't have control over the squeezy tube. Charlotte Tilbury has a bit more yellow tone. This one has a bit more pink. Should I show it to you? Let me just take some of that off. <laughs> There's much more iridescence to that one. Very mirror-like. And that's the Charlotte Tilbury. So if I had to pick, I would pick the Charlotte Tilbury because I find it just a little bit classier, I wanna say. That's not a very good word. I, I just find it elegant. And same with the Bobbi Brown highlighters. I find them elegant as well. I'm sorry, I forgot the Patrick Ta bronzer. This has the contour cream and I do love that it has this cover. So we've got the contour cream and then there's the powder. Okay eyeshadow palettes. Natasha Denona is my favorite for eyeshadows. I don't think I've ever disliked an eyeshadow palette that I've tried of hers, but this one is the best. This is the I Need a Nude palette and you're going to see everybody talk about this palette. There's nothing bad about this. My second favorite palette is by MAC and I have that on today. This is the, you'd think I'd remember the name by now. I just filmed with this. This is the Connect and Color Unfiltered Nudes Palette and you pretty much have everything you need in here. You don't have a black, but you can get a lot of looks out of this. I would travel with this one for sure and maybe a black pencil. Now my new favorite one, the half palette that I was talking about is this one. This is the Natasha Denona. It's my mini dream palette. I already use this and I'm editing the video right now. It will be up. Oh, and that reminds me, the blush is gorgeous too. I'll see if I can put a little clip in this video as well. The blush is so pretty. So that would be in my blush section as one of my new favorites. That's it for palettes right now. I did purchase the Makeup by Mario Matte's palette. It's really pretty, but I chose those because they have both. And I always add a shimmer. Eyeshadow sticks. I love the Bobbi Brown eyeshadow sticks. I like the Laura Mercier shadow sticks. They work, they're easy. Another one that you can find on Amazon, I believe, is the Glow Skin Beauty shadow sticks. They're the same. They don't move, they last, easy peasy to blend. The standout eyeliner of this year is the Shiseido Micro. I can't see, I'll put it up there. I purchased the plum and the brown. This does not move, it is waterproof. You can line the inner rim, like if you wanna do the upper rim, it doesn't transfer down onto the lower rim. I don't use this every day because I do have dry eyes and it can irritate if I use it too often. It doesn't irritate my eyes the day of. If you have dry eyes, just be careful of all products that you're putting in your eye. It can, you know, it's not recommended by ophthalmologists, but if you wanna look special and you want something transfer resistant or transfer proof, this is transfer proof, then these are the best. I think now we're on to lips and I think that's it. Oh, and mascara. I've been talking so long, I got this line here happening. I hate that when that happens. Gosh, I hope that didn't bother you the whole time I was talking. <laughs> that would bother me. That's better. I hope that that wasn't horrible for you to watch the whole time. I've been talking for hours because I filmed before, so that's why, and I haven't really drank a lot. I'm gonna go with lip liners first because oftentimes I will use the lip liner, I'll fill it all in, and then I'll just add a 
pop of gloss or a lipstick. The lipstick I just had on that kind of made that line is the Anastasia Beverly Hills lipstick. This is in taupe beige. I feel like it was partly the lipstick's fault. And the other one that does that to me is Charlotte Tilbury's. That kind of leaves a little bit of a line as well. I haven't tried the darker ones though, but it could just be me. Let me know if you've tried them and if that's happened to you. The Makeup by Mario lip pencils, I love. I have it in Hue and Kevin, I believe. Really, really pretty. I love Charlotte Tilbury's. This is really short. This is Iconic Nude. It's my favorite. I also love Pillow Talk 2. Um, do I have that in front of me? This one is really pretty. This is Super Size Me. I should be showing you. This is Iconic Nude. I always go for those colors that are your lips but better. This one is Hue. That one's a deeper color. If you're Canadian, Lise Wache. This one's Nude, also really good. And where's Pillow Talk? I have a bigger one of Iconic Nude, so you know I love that a lot. It's just a great contour. Let me show you. If you wanna overdraw your lips and have it look natural, I should sharpen this one, hold on. You see how I'm overdrawing that a little bit? Just above. I won't do it on this side, okay? There's my lip line. And then this one, I will. I'm just slightly extending it. Watch me like this side better than this side. I actually haven't done that in a long time. Just followed my natural lip line. Interesting. I don't mind it actually. <laughs> I'm just gonna clean up. Hmm. I don't know, different moods maybe? I think I like this side better and I went out and asked my husband and he picked this side. He didn't even know what he was looking at, but he chose this side. All this time I've been trying to make my lips look bigger and I think I've been messing up. I know this is about favorite products for 2023, but now I'm making it about me. Which side do you like better? And if you like this side better, then that should tell us something because so many of us are trying to chase after that full plump lip and that's what I've been doing for a long time. This is the first time in years that I've actually lined my natural lip on the line. And when I look at it, I think I like it better. Crazy. This is what happens, honestly, if you ever really wanna judge yourself, as long as you keep it positive, do it on camera. I have learned so much about myself in the past year. I said that in another video, but I mean it. This is a whole different way of seeing myself. I'm gonna do the whole thing on my natural lip. Let's go in with Iconic Nude again. This is one of my favorites, by the way. I think that looks better. <laughs> I feel so silly. Wow. I'm happy, actually. I'm happy that I like me better than the overdrawn me. I am actually gonna wrap this up pretty soon because I've been sitting here for a long time. All the lip colors that I choose are very, very nude. All of them. I'll show more lipsticks in my drugstore video, I think, because I've been trying out a lot YSL is a new discovery for me. I love the lip glaze and I love the number 15. That's my favorite. I love that over any lip liner and for some reason it feels like it stays. It doesn't stay like a long wear, but for a glaze, it really lasts a long time on me. The Natasha Denona Merit Baby is also really good and 
Yeah, that's about it for lips, honestly. I will play with more lip products in the new year. I almost forgot mascaras. I'm gonna rush through this one. Thrive Cosmetics, I recently got it. That's what I have on my eyes today. I love it. I have nothing bad to say about it. It doesn't flake, comes off really easy, it builds nicely. My lashes look great. If tubing mascara is not your thing, if probably my top favorite before I tried the Thrive was the Fan Fest. Benefit Fan Fest mascara. It holds my curl. It is a little bit harder to get off. That's what I find. And I'm not a fan of that, but I liked it so much it was worth it. Sometimes I would have to go in twice with my micellar water to get it all off. I'm not sure if anyone else found that with this. That's probably why it held the curl so well but if I were gonna pick between these two, I would pick the Thrive. I really like the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow. I like the brush. I got really good volume, it wasn't difficult to come off, and it didn't flake. I liked it enough that I used it often, so that tells me something. And I really enjoyed the Tower 28. I can't remember why I liked this so much, but I did. But I still like this one better. Am I forgetting something? I did try more drugstore. Again, that will be in my drugstore video. And I think we're finished. Whew. That's a lot. I'd love to know if this helps you out. I'd love to know if any of these products are your favorites. And if I didn't list your favorite, let me know what it is. I'd love to know. Maybe if I haven't tried what you love, I'll go ahead and put it on my list to try for future videos. I hope this helps and I will see you in my next video. Bye.